Good morning. I was pointing out yesterday how Paul, travelling around Europe and Asia, visiting the different churches, tries to bring correction to those churches and show them the way forward, and tries to have discipline, discipline into the churches as well. See, one of the problems with the Christian faith is if we say that foundationally all we have to do is accept Jesus as Saviour and Lord, and that is all we have to do. If then we receive the Holy Spirit, and that is what God requires of us, then in a sense we should follow the lead of the Holy Spirit, and God should guide us and show us what we should be doing and when we should be doing it. However, man's nature is so corrupt that he will use this in order to do anything he wants. And what Paul was finding as the church began to mature is that different habits were creeping into the church and people were not treating each other with respect. They were living their lives disobeying the foundational commands of God. They were saying quite simply, well, all my sins are forgiven. I don't need to deal with anything. I can do anything I want. And Paul was all the time trying to bring discipline back into these different assemblies. Later on, but we haven't come to it yet, of course, Paul would be arrested and go to Rome. But as I said to you at the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles, Paul was then released from Rome, probably because of the writings of Luke, who presented his case before the magistrates in Rome and showed them quite simply that there was no case to answer. And Paul again travelled, going down to Spain even, and was shipwrecked several times at sea, of which there is no record at all in the Acts of the Apostles. But writing to Timothy at the end of his ministry, probably just about as he was coming to be arrested again and tried again and then martyred in Rome, he has to write to Timothy and say, because of the discipline he'd been trying to bring into the church, he said, all the churches of Asia have rejected my ministry. They have all rejected my ministry. Are you in ministry yourself? Are you trying to minister in God's name yourself? Well, I want to point out to you this man, Paul. He was no different to you or me. He was empowered by the Holy Spirit. He'd been given a fantastic intelligence to be able to interpret the scriptures. He'd been given many abilities, but he's no different to you and me. Can you imagine the pain he suffered as these churches said, ah, we don't want anything to do with this Paul. He's always arguing. He's always trying to bring discipline, discipline into our lives. He's trying to correct us and put us right in what we're doing. We don't want anything to do with him. We're going to do it our way. We're getting on fine. We don't need him. After all these years of ministry, suddenly Paul himself finds that he is rejected. He says, I have run the race. I have fought the fight. You know, I'm coming to the end of my ministry. I've done everything I can. But, well, people don't like discipline. And they don't like discipline wherever you may find them. When you and I were called to minister in the church and through the church and to the church, when we are called to minister in this way, the big temptation is to say to people, well, if that's what you want to do, get on with it. If that's the way you want to live, just carry on with it. God will forgive your sins. He will bless you. You are destined to be saints. You're destined to become the people God will have you be. It's easy to say that. Easy to say that. But in fact, for those of you who are called to ministry, you'll also know that God also calls you to bring discipline into the church and to say to people, this is right or something else is wrong. And not because of the traditions of our society, but because of that which has been revealed to us by God as to how we should be living and what we should be doing. I remember once talking to a carpenter friend of mine, 
and he was training an apprentice. And he, I said to him, how do you train the apprentice? How, where, where do you start? And he said, well, I usually give them a bit of skirting board to do. And I show them how to do it and how it should be done. And then I let them get on with it. And then I go back and he said, it's amazing what sort of a mess they can make with a bit of skirting board. Now, I could say, well, yes, that's all right. Get on with it. But he said, I have to show them where they've gone wrong. And I have to put them right. So I tear it out and I tell them to do it again. And they get it wrong again. And I tear it out and I do it again. And they do it again until it's right. And five years later, they become trained craftsmen in their own right. And they understand why I had to discipline them. So we too must accept the discipline of God. But remember, just as Paul found, when he brought this discipline, people can turn against you. And this is something we must all accept in our lives. Amen.